Hi everyone. I want to do a quick run through of how to create a part in SolidWorks uh, so that we can use it to do analysis later on. Uh, now I realize that many of you are probably well more advanced than I am um, in using SolidWorks. So if you're familiar with all of this, great, uh, just bear with me. Um, I'll just be kind of showing a, a really basic example in, in this video. So if we open SolidWorks, uh, we'll get something you know that looks like this as an opening screen. And what I wanna do is go ahead and just create a part. And depending how fast your computer is, this may take a little while um, or not. So I've, I've uh, kind of got this, this base screen, right? And for me, uh, one of the first things I like to do is check what units I'm in. So if I go down, uh, and you're not gonna be able to see it because it's behind where my little uh, camera video is, just a second. So if you go down to the bottom right corner, there's a, a button that lets you choose your document units, so which units you're working in. Um, just because they're easy, I tend to work in either meter kilogram seconds or millimeter gram seconds. Um, of course, you know, you, you might be needing to work in inch pound seconds, but it's uh, the key is to make sure that you're working in the right units for, for what you're trying to do. So I'm going to select millimeter gram seconds for myself here um, and use that. Now, if I go, uh, if I want to create a part, one of the first things I'm going to do is, is insert a sketch. So I'm going to click the sketch tab and I'm going to click sketch and it brought up uh, my three planar views. Um, so you can choose whichever plane, you know, makes the most sense for what you're trying to do. Um, usually for me, it's probably usually either the top plane or the front plane. Uh, but again, that, that might change depending on what I'm trying to do. So I'm just going to pick a plane that I want to sketch on. And then for this, I'm just going to do a basic drawing. So I'm going to do um, a circle. And one thing I might uh, be interested in is specifying some, some relationships for the circle. Right now, I'm just doing a, a circle where I'm defining the center point and then the radius. Um, you can also do a three-point circle. For me, this is convenient, and I'm centering it at the origin, so my x and y position here is zero, which I kind of already specified by clicking in the center when I started it. Um, and then I want to start my radius. So um, I'm looking for something in the range of a one inch um, diameter, which, you know, I realize I just said I was doing uh, metric units, but I'm going to put in a radius of 12.5 millimeters, which is close enough for government work, as they say. And I'll go ahead and click OK on that. So I've got a sketch, you know, I can look at it. It's a nice flat circle. And um, if I didn't have this fully defined, I could come in here, I could click Smart Dimension, and then I can go ahead and, you know, use that to define my dimensions. But I'm, I'm satisfied, so I'm going to go ahead and exit my sketch. And now I need to create some geometry with this. So I'm going to go back to my Features tab. I just want to extrude this. And by default, since I only really have this one thing on here, it's, it's already selected the sketch for me um, and shown me a preview of what that might look like with just a value in here, uh, dimension of 10 millimeters. I might change that to be whatever I want um, to match whatever I'm trying to do. So I've got a part and everything, everything looks great. So if I'm happy with what that looks like, I can go ahead and click OK. Now we didn't do any of the other fancy stuff that we can do when we're trying to define um, define the geometry, define the, the, the characteristics of this, because we're just keeping it simple at the moment. So I've got a nice little cylinder here that I can go ahead and do other things with. Thanks.